Hello guys and welcome to a new video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to create a RESTful web service within .NET and the C Sharp programming language. And for this purpose we're gonna go in the menu as always, go to File, New and we wanna create a project. I will simply call it, I think I should call it REST Demo. All right, I'm going there, I'm typing in REST demo. And uh, the important thing is that you go to Monsieur Z Sharp, heading into the web section, and you're choosing a web application. All right, that's fine for us. Reading OK, and Visual Studio creates the project, and it pops up with a template selection. So what we are going to do now is we're going to choose web API project. We don't want web forms and we see at the moment, we don't want to create a single page application or the other uh, options. Uh, we're going to choose the web API project and with that, select, uh, with that selection, the web API gets selected and, um, and we see, yeah, I mean, we can live with that. It's a um, test um, page will be created. At this moment, we don't use any authentication. All right, we also don't use uh, or automatically create any unit tests. So we are um, clicking OK. I'm not so sure if this thing is responding right now. Yeah, it takes a while. Uh, this thing is running on a virtual machine on my um, <laughs> on MacBook, I have to admit that. OK, so now Mr. Judy is going to create a test project with a test controller. So the test controller is already there and it's already pretty much working example of a RESTful service. To test these um, RESTful web services, we're going to use a third party tool called Swagger. Uh, Swagger is very popular in the community. Um, it automatically generates your test pages where you can call your web services with parameter and you see the results and you also see um, the default result before you do any um, request. Uh, but for that um, Swagger thing, there is an additional um, new package um, required, which is called Swashbuckle, which we um, gonna do uh, install in a minute when this thing is finally finished uh, creating. All right, uh, we just should here finally finish the task of creating project. Right in our solution explorer, if we expand this view a little bit, uh, we see a folder where all the controllers are stored. Um, if we open this, we see there is a home controller. The home controller is basically the MVC controller where the home page is rendered. If we are starting um, this application, which we do in a minute in the Microsoft Edge browser. And there's a second controller, which is our REST controller. So we see here, we got a values controller. Um, one thing you have to know if you're using um, Visual Studio in your web API project, your name of the REST uh, controller of the REST um, endpoint is always um, that part till the controller starts. So what we see here in a second is if we are calling our values controller, we have to go there and call on the values endpoint. Um, there are um, get where you return um, an e enumerable, a get by ID, uh, posting some values, putting some values, and there is also the delete functionality. All right. Um, yeah, I think just to run this program so you can see what Visual Studio automatically generates when you are using um, one of these templates. All right, uh, I have to restart the build machine and to increase the size of the hard disk, but now um, I'm, the application is running. And as you see there, that is what I told you earlier, the home controller, which renders all of this. If you're now heading to the API section, which is automatically created from uh, Visual Studio and, and the web API project, we will see uh, yeah, uh, a very basic uh, description of of the API, which is not available, which only includes uh, the values, um, which are handled by the values controller. So if you go there and we want to see um, what's going on here, 
uh, we see the get method for all the values. Uh, we do see here a sample uh, with JSON and XML format, but we basically cannot um, do it right there. The only thing what we can do is we can um, trigger it by calling it directly within the browser API slash values. And we see there we got value one and value two, which should be if we stop here uh, in the debugging session and we're going back to our values controller, which is um, the two uh, entries in the string array here. All right. So what we're doing next is we create a known controller. So we go there, we're gonna go there and click add, and we choose the controller template. Of course, you can do it all by your own, by inheriting from the API controller, but for easiness, we go there. We can choose here several different options. Um, since we are using a web API project, we go there and also selecting one of these web API um, possibilities and we choose a controller with read write actions. Now we can choose our name. As you see there, it's already highlighted the default section because the controller has to be remained there. And let's say values, um, we want to create a better controller because why not? So we just do now create a, a weather controller class which inherits from the API controller and with the sample data. So in this case, uh, we don't want to, to post a value, to put a value and neither uh, delete. So remove the actions. Um, I just uh, show you then the differences with a swash particle and swagger. All right. Uh, in this case, um, we already have seen this pretty easy. Oh, I think it's pretty easy to to return uh, a list of strings. But now uh, we want to create a model which stores um, just randomized or not randomized, just static uh, weather data. So we go there. We're gonna create a new item, which will be our um, simple C# -sharp class which contains, uh, let's call it weather info. All right, and um, what I'd like to do is to use, uh, actually, uh, use a data contract, uh, because if you're using data contracts, um, you can define the name of the properties um, if they have to be different than the object names within C Sharp. I like to use um, object names in this case um, with um, an uppercase letter starting in C Sharp, but with a rest with the lowercase because that's the thing I do. Okay, weather info. Um, let's say we have here public string um, location uh, get and set. All right, and we also want the location, let's say, um, yeah, degree, okay, um, let's maybe, uh, uh, ah, float should be totally fine. And then we have location, degree, and let's say, um, date and time, all right. And if you're using right now um, the data members, all right, we can set the name of it. Location, just copy this for Makes it a little bit faster here. Um, degree and date time. All right. So now in our weather controller, we're not returning an ENM array of type string. We're returning um, an ENM array of type.
type weather info. All right. Um, just for your information, um, the usings are automatically imported by Reshopper when I'm using them. Okay. So what we're doing now is just to create, I don't know how many entries, let's say 10. Um, and, all right. And in the first place, we're creating a var. Oh, I have a problem here with weather info. Uh, let's call it list is a new list um, type. Not weak reference. That's not the thing we want to do. Uh, weather info. All right. And in the end, we're returning. this list all right and right there we're gonna create a new entry um, let's call this weather info we're creating a new instance of the weather info and then i like this way better we go to the allocation we're setting this to uh, location, then just um, coming up. We have uh, the second property, which is uh, degree, which is floating. Uh, let's say we have there I multiplied by 23 divided by, I don't know, 17. Doesn't make really sense what I'm doing here. Um, possible other fraction, that's fine. And then we have the last thing, which was, I'm not sure about it anymore. Uh, that take time, okay. That is take time. Now, and you should always use universal time when you're doing such things. All right, and then we are adding this thing to our list, to our weather info list. And there we go. We're putting our weather info on the list. And yeah, that should basically be everything. And just to make it uh, also working when we are putting there some kind of ID, we just have to set this ID and then we don't have to create it or recreate it, but we have, to, we can simply turn the values right there all right and that is not a string it's type weather info okay that's fine um all right that is actually i'm pretty confident it's working but i also want to add to a rest demo application the new good package for slash buckle that you can see what this is actually doing and how can you um, benefit from it. So I'm going to the browse section, um, slash, and search for slash buckle. You see there are 3.4 million downloads. So it's quite common. Um, okay, what's going on now is that NuGet is downloaded, installed, and apply to our REST demo project. So after this is done, um, you can simply start the application and call uh, the Swagger UI by adding, um, or by calling your uh, base URL and adding slash Swagger, which we'll see here right now in a minute. Yeah, or maybe even faster. So right now we are hitting run. What we are see is our home controller, which is totally the same. 
and then we should also see our weather controller which is available for interaction already all right now the application is loaded if we're going there and do the api which we were before we should already see our weather controller information here we go just drifted to get methods which are available because the other we have deleted and right now if we're moving the help section and call the swagger url you see there is swagger ui loaded up and you can see values um, with all the methods which are colorized and if we go to the weather we see there are our two um, our two uh, methods and if we go there to our get all weather data you see there there is the example data which location degree take time with lower cases as we have to find in our data member a configuration and then if we go to go try out we should um, receive location zero uh, oh come on zero up to nine so our 10 entries and you see there um, location is increased the degree is however calculated i don't really <laughs> remember the formula and if you go back to our weather and that's really fantastic about swagger you can also use this by adding um or testing parameters and so we can do there and say um 87 and call try it out you can see um, we got our response location 87 degree 107 and the actual time in universal time code um, of course if you don't want to use swagger if you just want to do it in your browser url you can go there and call weather oh i forgot the api so you got our uh, 10 weather and if you want to pass in a property you can do it with um, question mark um, i think it was id id equals 77 press enter and you get location 77 degree which is calculated under the time so yeah um, that is basically everything you need to do to provide a restful application of course there is no authentication there is no business logic going on it's just a simple controller which returns a list of values and also a specific um, value by its id yeah that's basically everything you have to do you can use this data in an angular application in whatever you want basically it's automatically um, converted to json or xml that's um, how you use it you can configure it um, in your uh, front end yeah um, so guys if you have any questions um, please do not hesitate to ask me i hope you enjoyed this video you can also read it um, in text form on my blog i will link it below and you can also watch this video on my blog as well of course if you have any questions as i said don't hesitate to ask if you have wishes for future videos please let me know until the next time goodbye and don't forget to like this video, of course. Bye, guys.